Hi traders and thanks for tuning in to XNS's Market Outlook. In this video, we're giving a possible idea for a trade over the next few days, some of the narratives that are driving that idea and what traders need to be aware of on the economic calendar and in other places if they choose to take the idea for the trade. I'm Michael Stark, Financial Content Manager at XNS, and joining me to give the idea today is Stanislav Bernikov, Trading Specialist. Thanks very much, Stan, for joining us. Hi, Michael. Thank you for having me today. What are you looking at then this week, Stan? What is the possible idea for a trade? Well, what we see for the beginning of October is probably the returning of the positive sentiment for cyclical assets and some metals, which we've been expecting at the end of September, by the way, but which hasn't happened. So I'm uh, looking forward in the potential continuation of the gold uh, rally, which we've seen uh, during the previous week. So the rally is very strong and it represents the potential shift in sentiment around American dollar and around interest rate and hawkishness of Fed. So uh, previously, the, the, for the entire September, we've seen the climbing of American dollar and it was basically the worst month for stocks. And now the sentiment probably is shifting because it's very natural to rebound uh, from such a negative month for equity markets. So it's very natural to take a break. Uh, by the way, also we see that Treasury yields are uh, turning into the plateau, into the sideways action. So they reached 3.7% approximately, which fixed expectations of traders. So I don't expect any further uh, strengthening of American dollar and Treasury yields uh, during you know the upcoming days. Uh, well, maybe before NFP, maybe something will, will change after NFP publication this week. But currently for this week, I don't expect much changes here. So probably those technical pullbacks, which we see on gold, on S&P 500, on NASDAQ, uh, will be continued. Well, as for cryptos, the situation might look a little bit differently. So they are keeping, you know, uh, it's, it's, quiet uh, price action, not reacting much to what's happening on the assets, but they will follow certainly in case we will see continuation on major assets. And in terms of narratives, um, you've talked about the dollar and you've talked about the yields from treasuries. Um, is there any other narratives that you think possibly are going to drive gold, whether that's sentiment on the Fed, you know, what the Fed's going to do is at its next meeting or geopolitical uh, problems or issues or any other narratives that you want to mention? Yeah, first of all, I wanted to show this uh, consensus around uh, interest rate uh, in November. So it's between two and three step hikes. Well, not very hawkish. So uh, investors are thinking that, OK, so recession becomes another important narrative other than inflation. So uh, at the previous speech, Jerome Powell had said that, OK, so we got to sacrifice a little bit of economic growth, you know, for the sake of price stability. So it and recession and a potential recession and economic growth might get back in focus because previously that was inflation primarily. And now uh, how, how can this work? For example, if we see strong data or relatively strong data for the employment this week, that might actually bring some positive to the markets. Previously, it was working vice versa, but now we might see some fuel for the growth, actually. So that's why I see kind of balancing between inflation and recession. So two narratives are working simultaneously, not just one. And that might be, uh, well, mild, mildly positive reaction for equities and cryptos. So that might be a good sign. In summary then, the idea for trading this week is a possible buy for gold, whether after a pullback, um, probably, and the possible target in the medium term for that might be around 1,750. And the main narratives driving gold up are the dollar's losses and uh, what appears to be a peak in uh, American Treasury bonds, and also the relatively less hawkish expectations for the Fed. And finally, the key release that traders must focus on this week is non-farm payrolls and American unemployment on Friday, which is at 12.30 GMT. So thanks very much, Stan, for joining us to give us the idea, the narratives behind it. Thank you, Michael. Have a good trading week, everyone.